Hot water can be something of a luxury when living in a van, but like us, lots of people find it adds comfort when on the road. There's lots of ways to get hot water and we've tried out quite a few, so stay with us to hear the pros and cons. Don't miss any of our regular videos by hitting that subscribe button now. You can also check out our website at explorevan.uk for more details on our vans, trips and all the products we talk about. There are a couple of options that we chose not to consider, but you may, so let's cover those first. Some people choose to use household or outdoor LPG instant water heaters as they're cheap and easy to fit. It's not something we'd choose to use as they're not designed or built for the hard life on the road. And with no external air intake and some even with no external flu, there are risks around oxygen depletion and negative pressure in the van drawing fumes back in from the flu. Usually being imported from the Far East, parts aren't generally available. If you are considering having your gas installation checked and certified, we don't believe this will be possible in the UK, as every gas safe engineer we've spoken to would not consider it safe. It doesn't mean you can't fit one if you choose to, and you may be able to fit it in your van in a way that is safe, but it would also be worth checking with your insurance company how they would view it. Another option we wouldn't consider is heating water using battery power. To have enough power to heat a reasonable amount of water when off grid, the cost and or weight of the battery bank and solar just wouldn't make it feasible. In some areas of the world, solar heating of the water would be a great option. Sadly, in the UK and mainland Europe, in the seasons we travel, it's not viable for us. There are off-the-shelf, low-cost and fitted options, or there are quite a few examples of DIY solutions online. You may just find that your supply of water is limited by the weather. Now let's look at the ways over the years we have heated water or would consider doing so in the future. If you're not bothered about a constant supply of hot water, the easy option for small amounts for washing dishes, hands or even yourself is a kettle. One option we've used outside of the van is a storm kettle which you can run on pretty much anything that burns from twigs to pine cones, paper to even dry sheet poo. The design means the water is held in a jacket around the chimney so the heat transfers very quickly from a very small fire, boiling in around two minutes. They're available in various sizes. Inside the van, obviously, an LPG stovetop kettle is the best option. An option, should you wish to want a bit more constant supply of warm water, you can always top up one of these insulated flasks whenever you make a cuppa to have a more regular and accessible source of hot water for hand washing and washing up without the hassle of a permanent installation. If you spend time on a campsite with hookup and again you're only looking for a small amount of hot water you may also consider an electric kettle or instant drinking water heater. For example in the past we've used our Dolce Gusto coffee machine with an empty refillable capsule to get hot water for washing up. Just be aware of the electrical current demand and that the campsite supply current as certain models may trip the current limiter. Again, if you're mostly planning to be on sites with a hookup and want a running supply of hot water in your van, a 240 volt water heater could suit you. Some of these solutions, like the Trumatherm TT, also allow a level of off-grid water heating if you have a diesel or gas-blown air heater by routing the air heating pipe through the water heater. Although this isn't really efficient, it is an option. A reasonably new product to the market is the Kamek IMAS Instantaneous LPG Water Heater. Unlike the instantaneous heaters we talked about earlier, this is designed for use in a vehicle. It's well built, has an external air intake and flue. It's economical on gas as it only burns when you need hot water, but it can't be used on 240 volts so you always have to have gas even if you're on hookup. As it has to heat water on the fly, it can take a bit of time before you get hot water at the tap, so you could find you waste a bit of cold water before the hot comes through. And being pretty new to the market, it's difficult to judge the long-term reliability and parts availability. Designed in Australia, it does have a challenge if you are looking to travel in colder climates due to frost protection. As it only gets hot when you demand hot water, you would have to drain it each night to prevent damage from freezing the water. 
it's not recommended to use it when the outside temperature is below 0 degrees C. If you find yourself regularly travelling between sites, using your waste engine heat to heat your hot water is an option. Using a calorifier, you can route your engine coolant pipes into the water tank and a heat exchanger heats the water. In theory, this is simple, but the installation can get complex and is individual based on your vehicle. A diesel powered water heater means that you can run this if you're stationary. You still need to have a calorifier tank to store the water once heated. Diesel heaters do tend to have a dirtier combustion than LPG, so tend to need more regular or in-depth servicing. For the well-known models like Webasto, parts are plentiful, but they're not cheap and quite complex to install. An option that caravan and motorhome manufacturers have favoured and have been using for some time are self-contained LPG 240 volt water heaters, including a tank and a heater. With models available from Carver, Truma, Whale and Propex, the flexibility of fuel source means they are great for both on and off grid. As they maintain all the water to hot temperature, there is no risk of freezing, so they are fine in sub-zero temperatures, though they do need to be drained if your van is in storage in winter. As they are used in lots of caravans, there is a large second-hand market and parts are plentiful. The designs are proven and they are very reliable. A slight variation is this new option from Whale. It's an under-vehicle LPG 240 volt water heater. So like the previous heaters, but the main unit is under the van, saving space and eliminating the need for a flue or vents inside of the van. Just a small hole in the floor allows the pipes, electrical connections and drain valve into the living space. If you're looking for both space heating and water heating, a combination unit from Truma is worth considering. They're not cheap, but do consider the price of a separate options and the space in the installation saving of just having one unit. Available in both gas and 240 volts or diesel and 240 volts, for on and off grid use they are great. They do seem to be the choice of many modern motorhome manufacturers. There is a similar concept from Aldi Heating that uses a wet combination system, heating water and then using liquid rather than blown air to radiate heat in the space of the van. They're more complex to install than most of the other options and require the fitting of expansion tanks and radiant elements for the space heating. They can be picked up second hand with plenty of parts available but they do take up quite a bit of room in the van. Here is a simple review of the different options we've talked about. We've also included product links in the video description. Here are my suggestions for some common scenarios. To keep it both simple and off-grid, a kettle is definitely the easiest and cheapest option. Supplemented with a flask to keep some hot water on tap, plus a bucket, USB powered shower, and if you want it, a shower tent, and you can be pretty comfortable. If staying mainly on campsites and you want running hot water, then there's the 240 volt water heaters. They're reasonably cheap and reasonably easy to fit. For on and off grid flexibility, where you already have a source of heating, a combined LPG 240 volt water heater and tank like these would be a great option. If you're just starting your van conversion and you want the best out there and you need both hot water and heating, the Truma Combi series provides both in one unit and it's definitely worth looking at. I hope you found all the information in this video useful and it helps you make a decision on what's best for you. Alexa, what's coming up next? In the next Explore Van UK video, we'll share how you can get Alexa in your van and what we do with it. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.